uh, help me on this one. Here's a term that's thrown around a lot, which I'm sure you'll laugh at. But, um, you know, obviously there's only so many spots in the NBA. And you hear from coaches and trainers and players the quote, oh, they'll just play overseas. Like it's just a given to players that aren't going to go in the NBA. And you're shaking your head right now. What? How hard is it to play internationally or how easy is it to play internationally? Like, tell me, tell me when I say that statement, what comes to your mind? It's, uh, I mean, it's just, it's one of the misconceptions. Um, I, I do, I do hear that a lot. And I think, unfortunately, it, it's because of one of the reasons I started my podcast is just like because of the lack of education and the lack of, of, of information out there. That's, that's, I mean, I don't know whose fault that is. I don't know if that's, you know, uh, uh, USA basketball's fault or the governing body or FIBA or whatever, but there's not information out there. So players will see something on Instagram or on sports center or on social media and you see the highlight like anything else in life. And you think, okay, well, yeah, I'm a division one basketball player and I'm really good. And maybe I'm not on draft boards and it's okay if the, the, the bulls don't draft me, but I will go to Barcelona or I will go to Milan or I will go to Paris and make hundred K. And, and my friend, for those of you listening, who have never heard this um, topic of conversation, you are very mistaken and you need to understand what, what, you know, playing abroad means. And that usually means that you are going to go to a city that you've never heard of. um, And you are going to potentially make a couple hundred bucks or a thousand bucks a month. If you're lucky, if you get paid on time, you're going to arrive in the city. No one's going to speak your language. You're going to get maybe into an Uber or into somebody picking you up that, you know, drops you off at uh, most likely a hotel first because your apartment's not going to be ready. Then when you get to practice, the lights don't work in the gym and it's freezing cold and you don't have Wi-Fi. And I can go on and on about this because you can you, you could probably tell I've, I've done this speech before. It's like mm-hmm. it's very different. It's um, and it depends on, you know, when we say abroad or overseas, that really depends on where you're playing. If you're playing in the second division of Japan or if you're playing in the Philippines or if you're playing in, um, you know, in the Ukraine or if you're playing in Barcelona. It really, really depends. And it's, uh, it's um, you know, th- there's there's many different situations out there. But what I can tell you is that, uh, you know, y- you basically start over the same way that you start over from being the best player in high school to going up, up a notch to playing in college. You're with the best of the best. So same thing when you're going from college, it doesn't matter what you score. You know, when you're a freshman in college, it doesn't matter that you scored 75 points in your game in high school or you're the conference player of the year. When you're a pro, no one cares. You think that you, you think that the first day of practice, um, you know, it, it, for the Boston Celtics, and there's a couple of rookies there. You think that you know the vets are saying, "Yeah, man, this guy scored 25 points a game in college." They don't care. They don't care. So you got to re-earn everything, and that starts with your salary and your position on the totem pole. 